السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله وكفى وسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى لا سيما المصطفى صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا My dear viewers Welcome to another live edition of Ask Huda And here is a quick reminder with our phone numbers Beginning with the record 002 then 0109-518-5170 Alternatively, record 002, then 01005469323. WhatsApp numbers, record 001347806005. And finally, record 001361489105. Um, you can watch us on the Intelsat 20, and you can watch us live also on the ArabSat, Sat, And you can watch us on our YouTube channel, Huda TV at the YouTube channel channel and uh, also on my page M Salah official or Huda TV on the Facebook page as well uh, Ali from Pakistan is the first caller for the day Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Ali how are you? <clears throat> Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Dr. Salah great to hear your voice uh, and glad to be the lucky first caller my question uh, Dr. Salah today is uh, regarding, uh, uh, I have been approached by some universities to teach uh, banking courses because, as you know, I was an ex-banker. Uh, can I teach these courses? Yes, of course you can teach these courses and while taking the opportunity of teaching, you can inspire the students about halal and haram and where you were, where you had the dunya in your hand, but you prefer the akhirah. So you tell them... <coughs> This transaction is haram and for the following reasons. And this transaction is halal. So the purpose of accepting the job is to inspire the students since you are an expert. The students who are studying business administration and meanwhile they have to learn about interest, usury and so on. It's not forbidden as long as they do not practice that. They learn to be acquainted. So if you are going to teach, then you should inform them about what is <coughs> right and what is wrong in this regard. Jazakallah khairan uh, Ali from Pakistan. Assalamu alaikum. Farooq from Sweden. Assalamu alaikum, brother Farooq. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sheikh Muhammad Saleh, I have a question regarding uh, uh, so there are a lot of cold infections going on in Sweden currently mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of brothers attend the masjid even though they have mild symptoms of a cold infection. Mm -hmm. I am quite scared of cold infections because I am studying in the university and it requires a lot of me uh, and during cold you get tired and all of this gets affected. And usually I, I really want to pray in masjid, but I don't really know how to uh, how to deal with this issue. I've okay. tried to remind the brothers to to not come to the masjid. Uh, how am I? Do you have any advice on how I'm supposed to turn any hadiths to back my statements up and etc.? Thank you, Farooq from Sweden. Uh, now you can hear the answer. I'd like to begin by saying I myself and my family have not been feeling well for the past couple days so I abstain from going to the masjid even though I'm very keen to attend the prayer in the masjid and lead the prayer and be part of the Muslim community but if there is a possibility that somebody might get infected then I abstain and every Muslim who assumes that his presence in the masjid may pose the least harm to people he should not attend the prayer in the masjid should pray in jama'ah at home and he will be rewarded. That is because even, even when it comes to bad smell, the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever happens to eat the fish garlic or fish onions should not attend the prayer and congregation in the masjid because it also offends the angels and the angels are offended from whatever offends the human beings. We all know, we're all familiar with the pandemic, which I believe that the third... <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. The third wave started a couple of weeks ago. Alhamdulillah, people are being vaccinated, at least in Europe and the USA, almost 100%. Uh, so the symptoms will be less and the death toll will be much less. People will experience like common flu. 
but there is a possibility of carrying the virus and infecting others. So my recommendation for those who may feel that they may infect others or cause the least harm to others if they attend the prayer in the masjid, to pray at home for the time being, until otherwise it is proven that they are healthy or they do not carry the COVID anymore. They can run the test obviously to verify that. Secondly, Muhammad, living in Sweden, living nearby a masjid, you have an opportunity to go, please go. All what you need to do is wear your mask, uh, carry the antiseptic with you, and your janamaz or the prayer rug. And I'm sure there's still the distance, uh, the uh, social distancing and the physical distancing still applied in the masjid. If not, you can choose to stay distant from the people for this reason, but still attend the prayer in the masjid. It is very crucial, especially for those who live in the West. It's like exactly recharging the battery of Iman. Thank you. Assalamu uh, alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Um Khairat, Nigeria, welcome no. to ask the Um Khairat. Go ahead. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Go ahead. Awesome, yeah, how can I help you, Ummu Khairat? You're live on Ask Oda. What is your question, please? I would like to explain something before I go straight to the question. May I? Yes, please go ahead. Okay. Um, last year, around June or so, I met a brother. He proposed to me. Mm -hmm. So I brought him home for my parents to meet him and they approved okay so but unfortunately i wasn't around i went back to school because i'm running my master's program mm. at hand okay so i went back to school not knowing the continued relationship and it even became stronger they even did an introduction behind my back and when i got back like getting to know the brother better i realized his dean isn't as strong as i want mm -hmm. he prays he fasts but the when it comes to other issue of the dean like the struggles are below his ankles and some other aspect i'm not comfortable with it Ta so i tried to back out mm -hmm. but my parents insist that i brought him home at first so i have no right to back out when he didn't offend me in any way Ummu Khayrat, fact number one, yeah. fact number one, when somebody proposes to a Muslim woman, not only that he should be religious and uh, with good manners, uh, manners, but also the sister have to like him, have to feel comfy and good around him. So some people find that chemistry from the first or the second or third meeting, and some people do not find it whatsoever. So now, now, do I have the right to turn down that proposal? Absolutely. But the brother prays, but he fasts. He's good. Alhamdulillah, shukla. But I don't think he's good for me, or I don't think I'm good for him. It's your call. So you want to back out? You can back out. Absolutely, it's your right. But if you're asking about that his uncles or his relatives, that should not be the reason. If you're asking your brother for a brotherly advice, if the brother is good and you like him, forget about you know his uncles and the surrounding. Because nowadays, it's not really easy to find a person who has good manners and he's religiously committed and you like him. So pray istikhara and decide whether parents or siblings or anyone should not put any pressure on you. They may help you. They may, you may seek their consultation and guidance in this regard. But by the end, it will be only you and him behind closed doors. So it's your call. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sister Aisha from Nigeria, welcome to Ask Uda. Assalamu alaikum, Aisha. Alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I, have, I hope you are doing good, Aisha. I'm doing wonderful, alhamdulillah. Thank you for asking. And you? MashaAllah, alhamdulillah. So I have um, two questions. Okay. My first question is about um, the cutting of hair after Umrah for a woman. How, how, what's the length that she's supposed to cut? And for example, if a Muslim woman has braids, 
on her hair. Is she supposed to just take one strand and cut it or put them all together and cut them? Yes, that's a good question. Aisha, the length of My a fingertip. My second question. The length of a fingertip. You collect all your okay. hair and you cut the length of a fingertip. Second question. One inch. That is one inch. Your second question, please. My second question is about the cut. Yeah. So, who is eligible for the cut? For example, if you know someone who is quite doing well, but he's struggling, but he has food in his house, he can feed his family, are you supposed to give that person the cut? Okay. Any and other one questions? Last request, please. Mm. Hello? Yes, go ahead. One last request, please. I would like you to include my son and in your prayers. He's He's, he's ill. He's at the brink of having stroke. So please, can you include May him? May Allah give him shifa. What prayer. is his name, Aisha? Ali. What is his name again? Ali. 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 Okay. May Allah give shifa, Aisha's son. Uh, may Allah give Ali, Aisha's son, a quick shifa. Allahumma amin. Allahumma shfihi shifa. Allah yuwadur saqama. Allahumma shfi marda al-Muslimin ajma'in. The person or persons who are eligible for zakah have been explained in A number 60, chapter number 9. And you find the first and the second are al-fuqara'u wal-masakeen. There are some people who have what is sufficient for them for a few months, but they're still eligible, masakeen. There are some people who work for the government or a private sector. Their lawful income is very really sufficient for them to go buy, to put bread on the table, to live day to day. Are those people eligible for zakah? Yes, they are eligible for zakah and much more eligible than those who beg. Because they work, they try to provide for their family. لا يسألون الناس الحافة. They never ask people out of uh, shyness, out of shamefulness. So they struggle to make it. And they don't ask. Allah the Almighty asks us to look for them, to pay attention to them. Awfully, I say, there are some doctors who are eligible for zakah. You know why? Because a doctor who works 16 and 18 hours a day and he's in the residency, and no one is providing for him, his salary is not sufficient for him to buy the white coat. So why do we have to force him to earn unlawfully? or to sign, with a, sign up with a pharmaceutical company that he would write certain prescription, put overload on the patient so that they will give him a commission of that medication. Enrich in them, if we can. Not because he's an MD or he's a school principal or a school administrator or a school teacher, that automatically means that they're well off. They're honest people. They are genuine people. So are they eligible for zakah? Well, if you know that their salary is not enough for them, then you should begin by giving such people and paying attention to them. Thank you. Uh, Isha from Nigeria. Assalamu alaikum. Osama from Algeria, welcome to Ask Oda Osama. Yeah. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, I have a question. Mm. Uh, in the in the prayer, someone uh, next to me, uh, in the left side, uh, left uh, the prayer, uh, uh, must I fill uh, the gap? Osama, unfortunately, I cannot comprehend your question. Your voice is breaking down. You want to try again? Use another, a different phone line? I would appreciate that. Assalamu alaikum. Samra from Canada. Assalamu alaikum, Sister Samra. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Hope well, you are doing well. Alhamdulillah. Thank you for asking. Go ahead, Sister Samra. Uh, Sheikh, I have a little confusion. Uh, actually, I've been um, reading the last verses of Surah Bakra and those uh, two words, aft and maqtara. And uh, while doing some reading, uh, there's some contradiction between the meanings of aft and maqtara, Allah's just. So, uh, which can you please explain the difference between these two and which one is better? Tayyib, yeah, Samra, Samra. 
before yes. before you continue finishing your question and before I tackle your question, it's nice to ask if I don't know, but it is not nice to say there is a contradiction between both of them. There is no contradiction okay. in the book of Allah. There okay, is no, no. yes, correct. That's true. Okay. Sorry, uh, and there I is no contradiction the... between the names of Allah. So it's beautiful to yeah, say correct. I do not know how to uh, reconcile between both of them, which one is more specific, which one is more comprehensive. That's a question, and it's your right to ask this question. Yes, uh, yes, uh, Sheikh Fadal, I'm uh, really sorry, may Allah subhanahu wa forgive me. I, mean. I actually meant that um, um, because um, I read that somewhere some scholars said that up is greater than maqfira, and maqfira, <laughs> some say that maqfira is greater than up. Uh, so I just uh, don't understand the difference between these two um, meanings. So if you can uh, simplify it for me. Barakallahu <coughs> Fiki, <coughs> Sister uh, Samra from uh, Canada. When Allah the Almighty mentioned two names which have close meanings in the same ayah, then the two names definitely do not have the same meaning. One of them must be more specific than the other or has some extra meaning than the other. I'll give you an example. In Surah An-Nisa, Allah the Almighty says, وَكَانَ اللَّهُ عَفُوًّا غَفُورًا So the word عَفُوًّا غَفُورًا referring to the two names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al afu and al maghfira and it is not possible that both of them would be identical otherwise why would he have two different names so because of that and it is mentioned a couple times in the quran about four times a combination of both al afu and al maghfira we we'll go to the arab and ask them about the meaning of the word af in the arabic dictionary so we found that they say the arab say afat al rih when the wind blows and it is very violent. So they say Afat Rih, it was very strong to the extent that it wiped out the traces of the footprints of the travelers. You know the Arab were very good in tracing the footprints. But now after the wind blow we cannot trace them. So Afat is to erase. So Al Afwa is to erase without leaving any marks, without leaving any uh, traces. So al maghfira is to conceal the sin and forgive it. To conceal the sin and forgive it. But its origin, it was written in the book, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have forgiven that. Al maghfira is to conceal or to cover. Al-Afu is to erase when Aisha radiallahu anha asked the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him about the greatest night ever which is Laylatul Qadr. He said, since it is the greatest night and the dua is most likely to be answered on that night, what is the best supplication to take advantage of the blessedness of this night to invoke Allah through with this dua? So he said to say, Ya Aisha, Allahumma innaka afoon tuhibbu al-Afwa fa'fu anni for singular anna for plural o oh allah innaka afu o oh allah thou, you are the one who pardons and pardons much more specific than maghfira pardons to the extent that you erase the sin you erase its traces and marks to the extent that the angels who recorded the sin against you on your left shoulder would not find its traces in the record anymore it's gone, it disappears. That is called Af. So Al Af is more specific than Al Maghfara, but both of them are amazing. They are dealing with the concept of removing sins, forgiving sins, remitting sins, but Al Af is greater and deeper. Wallahu ta'ala a'la wa a'la. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ali from India. Assalamu alaikum, Ali. Uh, alaykum salam, Shaykh. Uh, I have a question regarding when uh, Maghrib prayer ends. Um, 
I want to know, does, does it end when Isha starts for Maghrib? Are you aware of the red twilight that you see in the evening, approximately 45 minutes after uh, Maghrib? Have you ever seen that? Sorry, Sheikh? There's something called the red twilight. Are you aware yeah. of that? I've seen that, Sheikh. So when that disappears, that is yeah. the beginning of time for Isha. And that is the end of time for Maghrib. Maghrib particularly, it is so highly recommended I... to pray it at its earliest time, not to take the risk of losing the Maghrib time. Go ahead. Hello, Assalamu Alaikum, brother. Hello. I hope you got the answer to your question, Ali from India. Let's take another caller. Assalamu Alaikum, Rahmatullahi Barakatuh. Sister Juwayiriya from India. Assalamu Alaikum, Juwayiriya. Hello, Slap. Wa Alaikum, Salam, Rahmatullahi Barakatuh. I'm Juwayiriya from India. Ahlan wa sahlan. Welcome to Ask Oda. How can I help you, Juwayiriya? Um, the issue with me is that my mom, uh, the issue with me is that my mom makes me work in the kitchen after my school. The parents do What should I do? You said your mom makes you work in the kitchen after school. Am I correct? Did I hear you correctly? No. Yes, yes. Okay, so what is the problem yes, yes. with that? Yes. What is the problem then? You work with your mom in the kitchen after school. So what is the question? Uh, please advise, advise me, what should I do? I work with my mom in the kitchen. And the other day when yes. I finished the program, I went and I fried the fish. I washed the dishes. I sweep the floor. I fix the yes. beds. And I love to do it. I work with my wife in the kitchen yeah. and I ask her to rest and me and my and, and, and the kids take turns in doing the same. I clean up the bathrooms, I pick up the trash. It's my house. Aisha radiallahu anha was asked about the messenger of Allah, peace be upon him. How did he used to behave at home? He said, she said, Kana fi khidmati ahli. He was always, he keeps his hand busy at home. He would clean up polish his shoes, patch his clothes, but whenever he, he hears the iqama or the adhan to the prayer, he's gone, like he doesn't recognize us. So, you know, alhamdulillah, shukullah, it's, you, you're serving yourself. Some people have maids and they can afford it, but also it is very important to keep your hand at work, at home, help and assist. So the other day when I was, uh, my, my mother is sitting on a wheelchair, and when I was frying the fish, she said, Wallahi, it's much better than what we buy from outside. Keep your hand at home in work, like the Prophet Sallallahu Barakallahu Fikum. I don't see any problem with that. I know you're having homework and a, and a project. And my advice is, it will not interrupt your study. It will not affect uh, doing your project. We have plenty of time. You know what? If if we quit 50% of the time that we waste on the social media, you will feel like, oh my God, I have plenty of time. I'm bored. What to do? There are a lot more important things to do, but we keep postponing because we're busy with the social media. Assalamu alaikum. Hajar from the UK. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to Ask Hajar. Yes, go ahead. Um, my question is about so inshallah i will be i will um start a job soon that will be done from home but i will have to contact uh, male colleagues over emails and maybe over phone calls to help me with my projects and i don't know if this is permissible or if it's not permissible Tayyip hajar mere talking to the opposite gender for the purpose of work or education, there is a purpose, is permissible. You're talking to me right now, right? This is a beautiful conversation yeah. and there is nothing wrong with that. What Allah said in this regard, 
فلا تخضعن بالقول فيطمع الذي في قلبه مرض سورة الأحزاب What is forbidden is when you start talking with a soft tone Okay, cracking jokes and how are you? Why are you wearing today? Why are you doing it? It's none of your business, sir. We're talking business here. You're giving me an, uh, an orientation professionally. And that's it. So if you do this, it's permissible. But it depends on how you run the conversation. And uh, otherwise, plain talking to the opposite gender. Assalamu alaikum, brother. How are you? Okay, we're having a problem here. We need some troubleshooting. This is permissible. Your teacher, the sheikh, your students, your colleagues, as long as you keep it to uh, to the limit of within what is professional. Barakallah fiki, sister Hajar. May Allah bless you in your new job. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brother Muhammad from Emirates, welcome to Ask Wada. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalamu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sheikh, I want to ask, is it a sunnah to ask dua every day before Maghrib? Or would this be considered like a bidda if you do it every single day before Maghrib? Tayyib. Jazakallahu khairan, Muhammad. Every day between Asr and Maghrib, it is recommended to recite what is known as the evening adhkar. bil wal ibkar. That is the evening. Okay? From Asr all the way till sunset. So if you've been soon after Asr, and those adhkar, many of them are supplications. Sayyidu al-istighfar, Allahumma anta rabbi la ilaha illa anta, supplication. Uh, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-hammi wal-hazan, supplication. As'aluka bi kulli ismin sammayta bihi nafsaka anzaltahu fi kitabik, supplication. Allahumma alim al-ghaybi wa shahadat fatir al-samawati al-ard, supplication. Istighfar, supplication. So uh, this is a time that every day we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for needs to be fulfilled, evil to be warded off, good to acquire via the supplication. But on Friday, this time is what is known as the golden time. In the media field, I've learned from the director and the cameraman and, and the cast that there is one time which is like half hour before sunset and until sunset. I don't know what they call it exactly, golden time, golden hour. Magic hour. Magic hour. This is the most beautiful time of the day. On Friday, we don't have magic, but we have a promise that this is Sa'atu Ijaba, your dua will be answered. Okay? So an hour before sunset, you sit on Friday. Every day you recite an irregular adhkar, there is no innovation in that. And adhkar include what? Supplications. Barakallah fiq, my respected brother. Assalamu alaikum. Muhammad from the USA, welcome to Ask Huda. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Go ahead, Muhammad. Your voice faded off, Muhammad. I cannot hear your question. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can. Bismillah. Go ahead. Inshallah, I want to become like an amazing scholar, you know? Yeah. And I want to know, like, how do, like, the scholars find time for the kids? Aren't they studying and stuff? Taib, what do you do now? What do you do? Oh, I'm just a kid right now. You're a kid? How old are you? 14. MashaAllah, you're not a kid. You're, you're a great man. And this is the right age to begin. This is exactly the right age to begin. So, is there a nearby Islamic center, Muhammad? Which state are you living in and city? <coughs> Minnesota. Minnesota. Come on, man. You're living in Minnesota. Go to Al Farooq Masjid right away and sign up. Learn how to read Quran properly and memorize Quran. Um, do you know Arabic as well? I'm learning. I'm learning. You're, you're learning. Because in Minnesota, Sheikh Walid holds Arabic classes amazing very beneficial Walid Idris and there are very good scholars who teach in Arabic so besides that I don't want you to sign up with any of these universities where you get a certificate and you just pay it's useless you want to learn 
then you take the path of seeking knowledge where Allah will facilitate your path to heaven as a result. Learn how to read Quran. You do not necessarily have to memorize, uh, have to memorize the entire Quran. But if you can, why not? Some of my students have finished memorizing the Quran in Texas in two years, along with their homeschooling, of course. And every day I used to give them 10 vocabulary in Arabic, okay? So it's easy, affordable, and they didn't know an Arabic word before. So at this age, mashallah, you can do it. So if you, if you can memorize the entire Quran, great. Have the Quran, great. But work on learning the meaning, learning Arabic, okay? If there are classes in the local community teaching the hadith, the mustalah, the principles of hadith, the principles of fiqh, the beginners, uh, fiqh for beginners, attend those classes. If not, there are classes online and most of the Muslim communities nowadays, they air their classes online and they have YouTube channels. Choose a sheikh whom you trust and benefit out of his classes and transcribe what you hear in notes, study, ask questions in a malilmu bit ta'allum you want to enroll in a, in a school like full time or part time where you study online i can walk you through and also um al qura university in mecca now is accessible online to study and get a degree medina university is accessible online and you get a degree al azhar university likewise so mashallah it has become a lot easier private tutoring the other day i provided uh, <clears throat> a website and I said you can register your name and study Quran every five in a group it's called quranhouse.org quranhouse.org absolutely for free may Allah bless you and your family Muhammad and my dear viewers it's time to take a short break and we'll be back inshallah in a few minutes please stay tuned Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back. My dear viewers, our phone numbers should appear on the bottom of the screen. Feel free to dial any of the following numbers should you have any questions. Assalamu alaikum. Smiya from Canada, welcome to Ask Wadat. Smiya, how can I help you? Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum uh, salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I have a question. Yes. Uh, my, my brother wants to divorce my mother. Yeah, can you raise your voice, please? My, <coughs> yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can. That's much better. Go ahead. Bismillah. Bismillah. My father wants to divorce my mother, and my mother doesn't want to, to mm -hmm. divorce them. But I take care of both of them. Mm -hmm. But both of them, like, my mom doesn't want me to take care of my father and my father also doesn't want me to give up my mom. And mm. uh, my dad stopped talking to me and, uh, and he stopped cursing me because I do take care of my mother as well. So I'm not sure that in this situation, what should I do? So, Tasmiya, I have a couple questions for you. When you say you take care sure. of him, you mean financially? Yes. Okay. Second yes, question, right. second question, are they currently living with you in the same house or in a separate house and living together? No, no, they, they don't live together. My, yeah, my mom lives in my country, like my third country, Bangladesh, right. and my father lives in USA. Right. I mean, you've just so solved, they're not together. you've just solved the problem, uh, uh, Tasmiya, <laughs> because Alhamdulillah, <laughs> you should take care of both of them you should look after both of them and guess what I don't have to tell my father since he doesn't get along with my mother that uh, I did this with my mother or I contacted her so if he is happy that you're not contacting her don't tell him that you're in touch with her and likewise with the mother do not tell her that you are doing anything with the father do not mention his name mom I will do whatever make you happy dad I will do whatever makes you happy I'm sure there is a lot between them. That's why they, they ended up disliking each other so much. 
but you gotta play smart. You, you don't lie, but you say, I'm gonna make you, <coughs> excuse me, I'm gonna do what will make you happy, both of you, and take care of both of them, help them both, and do not tell them that you are talking to the other party. Thank you, Tasmiya. It is very awful when one of the parents is asking the children not to communicate with the other parent. He's as parent as you exactly, don't you get it? And if you want him to be dutiful to you, you should understand that he should be dutiful to the other party as well. And you know what? This is what the Prophet ﷺ referred to as al-fujru al khusuma When people become so evil, when they uh, boycott each other, when they have a discord, we are having a misunderstanding. You guys are divorced. No problem. Divorce happens. Many of the companions divorce their wives. Uh, the Quran spoke about divorce as sometimes the ultimate solution. But, imsakum bi ma'ruf aw tasihum bi ihsan. So even when uh, file for divorce or when you divorce your wife, be kind, be gentle, be gentleman. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sister Amina from the UK, welcome to Ask Huda. How can I help you, Amina? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to Ask Huda, Amina. Thank you, Sheikh. Jazana wa iyaakum. Um, so, praying each time, I pray with my waiter. If I happen to wake up, how do I treat the waiter? Got your question, Amina from the UK. Now you hear the answer. If I, oh, you have another question? Go ahead, Bismillah. Um, look, please. The law is to Amina from the UK. If a person happened to pray Aisha, then pray the Sunnah and the Witch. Is this permissible? Permissible. But I was lucky enough to get up before Fajr and I prayed Tahajjud. Now I need to pray Witch again. No, you can't. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, he said, there are no two Witches in the same night because odd and odd, it would leave us with even. And the Messenger of Allah said, Salatul Layli, Masna, Masna. So we pray even, two by two, two by two. But whenever you want to wrap it up, the night prayer, it should be with odd rakahs. One or three or five. You already prayed with in the beginning of the night. You got up to pray, go ahead and pray as many rakahs as you want. But two by two, no more witch. The beginning supplication is sunnah. It's recommended. Soon after you raise your hands and make the beginning takbir, you begin by reciting any of the beginning supplications. There are many. You choose one or two, more or all of them, if you're praying by yourself. And is it recommended to recite it also in the Nafila prayer? Yes. In the water prayer? Yes. Before and after Dhuhr. In every prayer that you begin with the beginning takbir, takbiratul ihram. What if I don't? You're not blameworthy. It's sunnah. It's recommended. You miss its reward, but the prayer is valid. What if I join the jama'ah in the masjid and the imam already recited Surah Al-Fatiha and I'm afraid if I begin the beginning supplication, I might not get to recite Surah Al-Fatiha, then be smart. Surah Al-Fatiha, its recitation is much more important. It's a pillar. If, you're, uh, if you have the time, then you should recite it on your own. So skip the beginning supplication and begin immediately with Surah Al-Fatiha. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Asti'adha. Din basmala, din al-fatiha. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Johnny from the USA. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Ask Wada Johnny. 
Waalaikum salam, Chef. First, I just want to say thank you for answering my question the other day. You're most welcome. But, uh, um, today, uh, can I ask two questions, please, if that's fine? Yes, inshallah, you can. Go ahead. Okay, the, the first question is, um, in terms of charity, uh, like, let's say somebody, they want to give charity, but they decided on um, feeding people abroad. But they have it in their head that they, they think they should do more, like something more needy. Mm -hmm. But like in terms of their wealth and their resources, that's, I guess, the best they could come up with, just feeding people in the mosque. Mm -hmm. And the second question is, um, is it like a correct understanding to think that like, like, let's say somebody is unemployed, but they're looking for a job, but they don't really have any skills or education, but they, they're using their time and their resources to do charity so Allah could reward them with a job or uh, opportunities? Is that like a correct understanding? Okay. First of all, whether mandatory or voluntary charity, the person should look for those who are in need around him for so many reasons. Number one in the hadith of the Messenger of Allah advising uh, Mu'adh ibn Jabal what to do when he deployed him to, when he invited him to Yemen, he said, so inform them about the alms which is due upon the rich to be given to the poor there, the pronoun, the rich to be taken from the rich people of them to be given to the poor people of them, of the same locality. Sometimes there are catastrophes. You know, poverty is not all the same. Some people who may have a vehicle and a house, but they cannot afford <coughs> eating meat. They're poor as well, so we give them. Uh, pay their utilities. But on the other hand, there are people who lost their houses. They are refugees. They are Muslims. So there is a pressing need, but it's abroad. Then the priority is to send the money to those who are having a pressing need. Winter is approaching. It is freezing. The kids are dying out of extreme uh, weather. Well, I'm sorry for the poor, local poor people, because their needs is not as important and as pressing as those whom, if we don't help them financially, they will die. Refugees in camps, okay? So we normally begin, that is a default, by those who are around us, relatives, their neighbors, friends in the community. If there is a greater need abroad, go ahead and give your money to any of these authentic organizations in order to deliver your money, and this is permissible. One of the categories of those who are eligible for zakah, those who devoted their time to collect the fund and redistribute it. So that's a full-time job. Can we pay them from the zakah fund? Yes. Can we give them voluntary charity? Of course, yes. Will they be rewarded for that? They will be rewarded because they're working fi sabilila, but they're getting money. Well, they're getting money in order to be able to function, but they are honest. They do the distribution honestly. They do the collection and they do not conceal anything for themselves. So they be rewarded. Likewise with the voluntary charity. We entrusted people to spare their time, take off from the job, collect money and dispense it upon the poor. So can we give them like a salary out of this? Yes, it is permissible. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jamal from Italy. Assalamu alaikum, Jamal. Wa alaikum salam, Sheikh. It's the Rais, Rais from Italy. Okay, how can I help you? How are you, Sheikh? I'm doing great, alhamdulillah. And you? Alhamdulillah, good, good. May Allah bless you. Sheikh, I, today I have two questions regarding my business. Mm. Um, I have a restaurant business. And uh, I wanted to ask you that is it permissible that I serve a shisha, which they call it not really here? Mm. Like, does it come um, and is it not like haram or makro? This okay. is my first question. Mm. And the second question is, uh, Sheikh, can any non-Muslim like work in the kitchen for the preparation of food, mm. specifically uh, uh, from Hinduism? Because some customer refused to uh, eat, eat it because they said that uh, like some workers are non-Muslim, so it's a halal restaurant. So I wanted to your guidance uh, mm -hmm. for this. Okay, got your questions, uh, Jamal from Italy. First of all, 
let me tell you a little bit about myself. Of course, uh, I have a, a shop, uh, but I don't run it myself. I rent it for people so in order to support the family and so on. So when I put it for rent, uh, the rent is just a little bit. A lot of people come offering double the rent because they're going to serve shisha, argila, as you just said. It's a coffee shop where they will serve this. I said, no. I said, it's not haram. It's just macro. No, it is 100% haram. It is smoking is forbidden. It is harmful. It kills. It's carcinogenic. And learn from the messenger of Allah how he said, whenever Allah forbids anything, then its price is forbidden. If Allah forbids the consumption of wine, then selling it, serving it, carrying it, uh, squeezing it, uh, packing it, all of that is forbidden. Pork, swan flesh is forbidden. So it's not permissible to put it on the pizza or to deliver such pizza because it has something forbidden. What does the hadith say again? In Allah, إِذَا حَرَّمَ شَيْئًا حَرَّمَ ثَمَنًا Whenever Allah forbids anything, then the price, this, the, the money that is generated out of selling this item is also haram and it is forbidden. So it may sit there for a couple months without rent, but Allah the Almighty compensates me from too many different ways. Halal, even if it is little, it's a cure. It's a blessing. It's a means of protection. It's a means of approach to Allah. It's an act of worship, okay? Earning and spending. Haram is destructive. Is destructive. Is destructive again. So avoid it, even if it seems like it will bring a lot of customers. Remember what Allah says in Surah Al-Dhariyat. Inna Allah huwa al-razzaqu dhu al-quwwat al-mateen. The Almighty Allah is not just razzaq or raziq. The extensive form ever provider. Seek the provision from him. Not from those who are going to smoke what Allah has forbidden. Don't, don't, don't. Hindus. Buddhist, atheist, working in the kitchen. What are they doing? Baking the bread, uh, putting the pizza in the oven, fixing the pasta. Yes, what about the meat? Do you have a slaughterhouse? No, uh, we get the halal meat and they process it. Then whether the food is processed, processed, cooked by a Muslim, Jew, Christian, Buddhist, Hindus, atheist, it doesn't matter. Allah the Almighty says, وَلَا تَأْكُلُوا مِمَّا لَمْ يُذْكَرِ اسْمُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ That is pertaining to the meat, not to the macaroni, not to the rice. So the meat has been slaughtered and sacrificed lawfully. Then this guy is cooking it. Bismillah. It's halal. Assalamu alaikum. Olya from the UK. Assalamu alaikum, Olya. Walaikum as-salam. MashaAllah, how old are you, Olya? Six. You're six years old? MashaAllah, you're pretty old. Go ahead, Olya. How can I help you? Um, I, I have some questions for yeah? you. Yeah? Um, first, at the time of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu when he went to Jannah to for a dose, why did Allah say 50 praise? instead of five prays straight away okay good question i love your question mashallah olia your second question please um when when i grow up i want to be a chef you're already chef. growing up mashallah you're big you're speaking like a grown-up woman mashallah you're very wise so i think you're ready to be a sheikh now not a sheikh you know, to be a sheikh, you have to have a beard, Olya, and a mustache. Okay. Okay? But inshallah, you'll be okay. a sheikh, and you'll wear a nice hijab, and you will teach a lot of people. Mark down my word. Inshallah, in a few years, we'll be watching and hearing lectures for Sheikh Olya from the UK. Do you have another question? Inshallah. Inshallah. Okay. Now, can I answer your questions, Olya? Yeah, 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 please. Okay. Jazana if you permit me. Olya, six years old, from the UK, has a very interesting question. During the journey of uh, ascension to heaven, when the Almighty Allah ordained on Prophet Muhammad the prayers, and we all know the story since our childhood, 
Initially, Allah ordained the prayer 50, 50 prayers, oh my God. Then the Prophet Muhammad wrote Prophet Moses on the sixth heaven, so he said that's too much, ask Allah to reduce them. He went back and forth, each time they will be reduced, 10, 10, 10, 10. Then finally, Allah made them five, and he said there are five as far as the number of the prayers that they need to be offered. But as far as the reward, they maintain the reward of 50. Whoever will offer the five will get the reward of 50. So why didn't Allah from the beginning just make them five? He could have made them five. But in order to teach us, number one, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is full of mercy and pity for the believers. He wants to give them ease. And number two, when we pray, we realize that each prayer we offer worth 10 prayers as far as the reward. So we appreciate the blessing of the Almighty Allah. He said, Man jaa bil hasanati falahu ashru amthaliha. Whosoever brings, whosoever does a good deed, Allah will reward them 10 times more. And this is the minimum earlier. To be a sheikha for a girl, it's a sheikha. For a masculine or a man, to be a sheikh. Okay? You need to learn, like what you're doing right now. Follow Ask Huda, Guardians of the Pious, correct your citation, follow Huda TV programs, and I promise you, you will be a scholar, inshallah. And also, listen to your mom, listen to your parents. If you listen to them and you obey them, Allah will bless you and will open your heart and mind to become a scholar. Excel in your school, learn reading and writing, and learn how to recite the Quran properly, you will be great. And can I be your friend? Anytime you need any help, just give me a buzz. I'll be more than happy to walk you through all your brothers and sisters, my dear viewers. We ran out of time, unfortunately, but this is life. So until next episode, I leave you all in the care of Allah. I will say this and I will pray for Allah and for you. Subhanakallah wa bihamdik, I pray that Allah is not the only one, I pray that we will pray and pray for you. وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Allah is my heart's speech. Your mercy is what I beseech. Keep in my heart your remembrance and in your deen allow me to advance. Help me in my quest. Permit me to pass the ultimate test. Help me in my quest Permit me to pass the ultimate test Allah is my heart's speech Your mercy is what I beseech Keep in my heart your remembrance And in your deen allow me to advance